Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this poster in Photoshop. Did you know that there is a technique you can use in Photoshop to take almost anything and turn it into a pretty realistic gold effect? What I want to do in this tutorial is we're going to take this poster that you see here for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and we're gonna recreate this with our own images. Now, obviously I don't have a large wall of gold foliage, but we can use Photoshop to create one. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, if you wanna follow along, I have included a link in the description of the video where you can get all the assets that you'll need to follow along, including the gold gradient maps and the layer styles that you're gonna need to create this effect. So go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a new file. So I'm gonna click on the new file button here. And if we go to photo um, and just select one of these, that'll set some of these basic templates for us or basic uh, settings that we want. Here, I wanna change this from inches to pixels. And I wanna make this 2000 pixels wide by 3000 pixels tall. We're going to set the resolution to 72. And then for the working space, I'm going to make it Adobe RGB 1998. And then we'll go ahead and call this poster template. And then we'll hit create. All right, the next thing I want to do is set up some guides so that uh, as we place things in our file, you can follow along and have some visual guides. So let's go up to view, guides, new guide layout, and let's just default this. Okay, so for columns, columns, I'm gonna do four columns and I wanna get rid of the gutter. And for rows, I wanna do two rows and again, get rid of the gutter. I'm gonna turn on the margin here and for the bottom margin, I'm gonna do 230 pixels. For the left and right, I'll do 150. And then for the bottom, I'm going to do 100. All right, let's hit OK. OK, now that we have our guides in place, let's go ahead and bring in our first image. I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded. And in our Assets folder, you're going to see the Sydney Ray from Unsplash. Let's go ahead and place that. And when it comes in here, I'm just going to rotate it. I'm going to hold down Shift so it snaps and then hold down Option and just drag that to the top. That'll make it expand out to the size of our canvas. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit that check mark. All right, next, we're gonna use a gradient map to turn this image into a gold image or a gold background. Now, we're gonna be doing that with a gradient map. So let's go ahead down here in our adjustment layers we go to the bottom here, you're going to see one called gradient map. And what a gradient map is it, what a gradient map does is it maps all the colors on the left side of your gradient to the darks of your image. And then it maps all these, all the uh, light parts of your image to the right side of your gradient. So if we go and click on this gradient here and just reverse the location of these two, you'll see that we're basically getting a black and white image because this image is applying blacks to our darks and then whites to our light. Now, by controlling these colors, let's say making this a dark gold of sorts and then making this a light gold color, you can see that we're starting to recolor our background into something that's starting to look a little bit more like gold. Now the trick for making a gold texture is you don't want it to just go from dark to light. You want it to go from dark to light, back to dark, and then back to light. So for example, if I take this and bring it to the center here, and then add another spot here and make this dark, you can start to see here that this is getting a metallic look to it. And then I can go back to a light color and then obviously by adjusting the location of these, we can adjust our metallic effect. So that's the basics of it. I have already built some nice gold gradients that we're gonna use for this tutorial. 
So rather than working on this one gradient, what we'll do is just go to this little gear icon here and then go to import gradients. You can also click on this button here, import. In the assets for our tutorial, you're gonna see these nuclei gold gradients. Let's go ahead and select that and click open. And now if I drag this down here, you're gonna see these nuclei gold gradients. And let's open that up and you're gonna see we have some gradients pre-built in here. The first one we're gonna use is this one here. And if I click on that, you can see right away the effect that this is having. It's giving it a nice, cool, metallic look. So let's hit OK there. OK, now that we have our basic gold in place, the next thing I'm going to do is add a gradient to the top and the bottom. To do that, I'm going to add a new layer, and we're just going to call this Top Bottom Gradient. And I'm going to go on to my gradient tool, which is G on your keyboard. And when you have the gradient, you have two modes for the gradient tool. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, you just have the classic gradient. The new gradient mode basically creates a dynamic gradient layer when you use the tool. I don't want that. I want it to just add pixels to my layer. So I'm going to use the classic gradient. Next, in here, I want to go to basic and make sure I have the foreground to transparent gradient preset selected which is this middle one. Okay, then we are going to change the color of our foreground color. In here, I want a really dark gold color, so I'm gonna use 382A18. It's a nice dark gold. And then with my gradient on linear, going foreground to transparent, I'm gonna start from this corner and kind of go toward the middle, and then from this bottom corner and kind of go up toward the middle. I'm going to do that twice on each side just to make sure this has enough uh, color to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this to multiply. And right away you can see we're starting to get a little bit more depth in our gold background. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is pull in our model. So let's go to File, Open, and we're going to be opening this DNG file. DNG is a digital negative file, so when I open it, it'll open in camera raw. Now, let's click on here. If we go in here to our panels, you're gonna see that this already has settings applied to it. So we're not gonna do any changes in here. The one thing you should check is just click on this link here and make sure you don't have this checked. Um, in some workflows, you actually do want this. If you ever have the if you're ever going to go back to your original. But in this case, I'm going to be making changes to it. That'll make it so that going back to camera raw would just mean redoing the whole project. So I'm going to leave this turned off. Let's hit OK and let's hit open. OK, so there's a few things I want to correct in this image before we pull it into our poster. Namely, I want to do some touch ups on the face, get rid of this uh, dust particle that was on my sensor put some floral texture onto her shirt, uh, get rid of the polka dots on the skirt, and also change the color of the skirt to a rich kind of burgundy red, and then also put that burgundy red color into her headband. So let's tackle this chin first. Uh, here you can see there was a spot on my uh, sensor, so we want to get rid of that, and we can probably just use the remove tool for that. So let's go here to our remove tool. And go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. And I'm just using my uh, back bracket key to change the size of my brush. I want to paint over this entire area where that spot is. And then I'm going to hit the check mark. If you have remove after each uh, stroke turned on, you won't see this check mark here. And there you go. That looks pretty good. Let's zoom out. Um, if I didn't know it was there, would I notice something? I still feel like I kind of would. So I'm going to Command Z or Edit Undo. And I'm going to try this with the 
generative fill. So with the generative fill, I'm just going to make a selection around it and then go to generative fill and just click on the generate button. I found this has a little bit better results than just using the remove tool. And also it'll give me three options. So let's zoom out. I think this first option is the best. Yeah, that does a good job of removing it. Now I want this to be uh, embedded in, meaning I don't need a separate layer here. So what I'm gonna do is just make a copy of my background. So I always have that to refer back to. And then I'm gonna take this layer and my generative fill, hold down shift so I'm selecting both of them and go to here, merge layers. And you'll notice that the shortcut for that is command E. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is clean up all the spots here on this dress. Now there's three ways that you can do this. Well, actually there's four ways. And pretty much all of them are within these healing tools. So the first way is the remove tool. Let's go ahead and I'll show you that first. With the remove tool, all I would do is draw over one of these or more than one of these. And then once I've drawn over them, I would go ahead and click this check mark and it's gonna remove them. Alternatively, you could just turn this on, remove after each stroke, and then click on the individual dots to get rid of them. So that's one method. The other method that you can use is the spot healing brush tool. And this will basically give you the same results as the remove tool just because here the contextual information is pretty clear. Um, all we're doing is getting rid of the dot. So this would be another way of doing it. Uh, a little bit more control than the spot healing brush is the healing brush tool. And this is basically like the clone stamp tool in that you have to hold down option and select the source. And then as you draw over this, it's gonna use the texture from your source but the colors and the value of lightness and darkness from where you are filling it in. So for, you know, if you're going into a corner, maybe here, you may want to use this so that you're still matching this corner effect there or the texture of that fold. Something like that. Now, the other tool is the patch tool. And with the patch tool, similar to the remove tool, you're gonna go and make a selection around a bunch of the dots. You can hold down shift and select more than one at a time, or just turn this one on. Now, once you've made a bunch, you're gonna drag this to another part of your image and it'll copy that over similar to the clone brush tool, but it's doing a larger area at once. Now, of all these tools, I think the Spot Healing Brush is gonna give us the nicest results the fastest. So here, all we have to do is click on the individual dots and it's gonna get rid of them. This is a little tedious, so I'll just fast forward through it. For these places where it's close to an edge, I've actually switched to the remove tool. Um, it's slower than the spot healing brush, so I would only use it where you have to. But if you have something like this where it's going into a shadow and crossing over, the remove tool is gonna be is gonna do a much better job of rebuilding the finger than the contextual spot healing brush. So for edges or seams, you can use the remove tool in place of the spot healing brush. All right, that looks really good. The next thing I wanna do is recolor the skirt. So for that, I need to first select it. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to my object selection tool here and just kind of start from the bottom left and then draw a circle around just where the skirt is. 
And that did a pretty good job, although it did include this arm. So I'm going to hold down Option, which puts me on the minus selection, and just select around this arm. And you can see that that has now removed that from my selection. So I want to do it for this hand here and also for the belt. And also this part here. Okay, so pretty much everything's in my selection. There is a few things I need to uh, correct, but I don't think this tool is going to get me very much farther. So I'm going to switch to my lasso tool here and then hit Q on the keyboard. Now the Q, or clicking on this little icon, brings you into the quick mask. And with the quick mask, you're basically seeing an overlay showing everything that's not selected and everything that's not isn't covered with the green overlay is in your selection. And this allows you to go and make corrections to your selection using some of the brush and selection tools in Photoshop. So here, for example, I can make a selection around this part of the dress here and then fill in this part with white and it's going to be filling it into my mask. So here I want to fill in with the foreground color hit OK. You can see that that's been added to my selection now. Now the shortcut for filling in with your foreground color is Option and Delete or Alt Backspace if you're using a PC. Okay, so here I want to get rid of the pant leg that should not, or sorry, the leg should not be in the selection. So I'm going to select this area and then fill it with black. So to fill with black instead of white, I'm going to hold down Command instead of Option, and then again the Delete key. And we'll also do this little spot here. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good selection of the skirt there. Let's hit Q again. That'll take us out of quick mask mode. And then I'm going to add a hue saturation layer. And here, before I start making any corrections, I'm going to go ahead and select this little guy here and just click on the skirt color. And you can see that that's added these controls here so that I'm only affecting certain colors. I can make it a little bit bigger and then start moving this to the right to get my red color. Also going to increase the saturation a little bit and reduce the darkness. All right, then I need a little bit more red here. So what I'm going to do is hold down command and click on my mask. That'll load the mask into my selection. That way, when I add a curve layer here, my mask will be pre-built. And then here, I want to go down to green. The opposite of green is magenta. So if I pull down the green, I'm going to get more magenta. Then I can go to my blue. If I pull that down, I'm going to get more yellow because the opposite of blue is yellow. That's about the color that I want, but I think I want it a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to the RGB here and just pull this down a little bit. And I think that's about the color that I want. And I am seeing a little bit um, in this seam here. It looks like we should have just a little more red. So on the problem here is we now have two masks. So if I need to make any corrections to this, I have to deal with two masks. So I'm going to show you a trick on how you can apply two corrections with a single mask. It's pretty easy. All you're going to do is hold down Shift, put both of these into a folder, and then take your mask and drag it to the group and then go ahead and delete the second mask. So now I have one mask that's controlling both of these effects. If I go into uh, my brush tool, for example, just select a soft round of brush, take down my um, size here and start painting. You can see that this redness is kind of being applied to these little bits of the dress that we missed in our mask. Something like that. Do the same. Just make sure we didn't miss any of it there. And I think that looks really nice. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is add some floral pattern to her shirt here. Let's go to File, Place Embedded, and inside our assets, we have this shirt pattern PNG. Let me go ahead and place that. And let's go ahead and make it a bit smaller so that it kind of fits the front of our shirt here. And I'm gonna place this, kind of, I want this to be in the center. Make this a little bit smaller still. And then once I have this now kind of in place, I'm gonna hold down Command and skew this just a little bit. But most of the skewing I'm going to do with this here. So let's go ahead and click on this. This allows us to kind of meld or warp our object to better fit this shirt here. So I'm going to pull this in, pull this one in. And in addition to the controls and the anchor points, you can also just click on the mesh itself on the mesh itself and move it around. And I often find that that's actually far more intuitive than trying to move the individual controllers. You can do something like this. I just want this to look somewhat like it's conforming to her shirt. Now I I'm kind of disregarding this little gold thing that sticks up because I plan on getting rid of that. So let's hit the check mark there. I'm gonna add a mask, zoom in here, go onto my lasso tool and just select out this little gold element at the top here. And then fill my uh, mask with black with command delete. So there you go. Then I can put this layer on multiply and I also want to add just a little bit of yellow to this layer. So with the layer selected, not the mask, I'm going to do Command M, which is curves, Command M. And then we can go to our blue and just pull down the yellow a tiny bit. There you go. That just looks a little bit closer to the color of her bottom dress. And then I also want to add this nice red color to this band on top of her head. To do that, first we need to select it. So I think we can do that just with our pen tool. Um, anytime I'm making a selection that has curves, I, I like to use the pen tool. Make sure it's on path, not shape. And then we can start down here, click. That'll create our first anchor point. Click again, create our second anchor point. And if you click and drag, it's going to add these curve anchor points, which allows me to control the curve. Then I can hold down Option, click on that to cut off the curve handle, and then just keep drawing a shape around here. So click and drag, click and drag. And then once you've clicked and dragged, you can move this around to get your blue line to conform to the selection you want to make. Um, I've done a lot of videos on the pen tool. You can look them up if you're not familiar with using it. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but once you're used to it, for me, it's one of the most intuitive tools for making curved selections like this. Oops. And here we can do right mouse click, go to make selection. Here for the feather radius, I usually add a 0.5. That's basically just making my anti-alias a little stronger. And then here, um, there's quite a few tools we could use to add the red color. I could add just a solid color here, select the red from her dress, and then put this on multiply. That's an okay job there. Um, I do feel we lose a little bit of uh, a little bit of realism with the red kind of covering all the highlights. So let's try a different method. I'm gonna Command Z a few times just to get back to where we were with our selection. And here I'm gonna add a curves layer. 
and with the curves layer. Although you would think, I wanna make this red, so I'm gonna to go to my red channel. Because you wanna make it red and darker, you actually have to go to the other channels, right? By getting rid of green and blue, you're gonna just leave red in your color. So let's go to green first. I'm gonna pull this down, kinda of also pull down the middle of it. And then I'm gonna to go to the blue, pull this down, kinda of pull down the middle of it as well. And then on the RGB itself, I'm also gonna pull that down, just get a little more darkness here. And compared to the previous one that we did, it's very similar in terms of results, but we do have a little more control here if I wanted to make it a little bit lighter, darker, um, a little bit less red or what have you. I have much more control with my curve. It's also just my go-to tool for most color adjustments in Photoshop. The, the advantage of that is you can get really good at it. And once you're good at it, you can use it for virtually anything you need to do with color. You can use the curves, whether it's changing a color, adding a color, uh, giving a tint, all those things you can do with your curves. So I definitely recommend getting good at that curve. Okay, so now that we've added the color, the other thing I wanna do is some uh, liquify on the face itself. I'm gonna show you a trick here. What we're gonna do is go back to our model layer. And before I jump into liquify, I'm just gonna make a selection around her face area. This is so that my liquify doesn't have to work with the full image. I'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm gonna go into liquify here. And here you can see we have some face aware liquify options. Also, if you go down to the face icon here, you'll notice that we have some, as I hover over parts of the face, we have these controls. So here, for example, if I wanna open this eye, make it a bit bigger, I could do that here um, by grabbing that controller. You can also do things like this here. So you can play around with this, but what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna reset, and for the eye size, I'm gonna lock these two together so that it's doing both eyes at the same time. I'm gonna make the eyes just a tiny bit bigger, like about 20%. And then down here, we scroll down, you're gonna see this jawline. I'm just gonna pull that in a tiny bit just so that we get rid of those kind of uh, baby, the baby fat in her cheeks there. Okay, so that's pretty good. The last thing I wanna do is in the eyes, I actually wanna make the pupil smaller so that I have more iris to put color into. Now, I should have thought of this when I was doing the photography by putting a stronger light in her eye <laughs> to reduce the size of her pupil because when you're doing photography, you really want those the eyes to shine. But we can do a little trick here with this tool, which is our pucker tool, and just make the brush size basically exactly the size or just slightly bigger than our pupil, and then click into the pupil itself. And you can see what that's doing. It's kind of pulling in the pupil and giving us a little more of the iris that we can add some color to. So let's hit OK. That looks good. I do want to do one more thing with her eye, and that's add a little more color to it and also make the catch light bigger. So let's go to the top of our layer stack here. I'm going to go on to my lasso tool and just make kind of a crescent selection at the bottom of her eye. And it doesn't really matter if your selection isn't perfect. You can see here mine's jiggling a little bit. That's good enough. And then here, I'm gonna to go to my adjustment layers and bring up a curve again. Here, I wanna bring up the middle of the curve and then down the bottom of the curve. So we get this kind of glow in the eye. It's probably overkill, but let's start with that. And then here under properties, I'm gonna to switch to the mask properties and just add a little bit of feathering until I don't see the edges of my selection anymore. So something like this. And that might be a little bit too bright. So let's just take this down until it looks natural, which I think is around the 60% mark. That looks natural. Okay, and then we need to make our catch lights a little bit bigger. 
uh, when you're doing portrait photography, especially when you're doing it for portraits, you really want to have a nice catch light in your eye. So let's make a new layer. We can call this catch light. And here I'm going to make a shape that's similar to this shape here. So kind of uh, oval like this, something like that. I'll just kind of put it in the same place as the existing one. And then I'm going to go to my brush tool, hold down option and select the existing catch light color and paint in there. And then if I deselect here, go onto my move tool, hold down option. So it's making a copy. I can copy this to the other eye about there. I'm going to do command E on my keyboard. That's going to merge these two layers into one. And then I can go onto my brush tool again. Just kind of make my brush a round little dot. And I just want to add a dot to the other side here. Just kind of make this a double catch light. And I think that looks really good. Okay, so now I can take all the layers that make up our model, which is basically everything but the background, and do Command G to put that in a group or a folder. And then I'm gonna change this to Model. And here I need to add a mask to the group that cuts her out. So let's go to our model layer, go to any of our quick selection tools here, and you'll see the select subject. I'm gonna put this on cloud and then click on select subject. And you can see that's done quite a good job. Let's go into the select and mask workspace and probably need to do a little bit of correction on the hair there. If I hit K, that's gonna change my view mode up here to black and white. So the ones I use the most are overlay, which is V, and then black and white. So, okay, you can see our hair doesn't look great. Let's try the refine hair and see what that gives us. Okay, not good. Let's do Command Z. Okay, so let's go to V, which gives us our overlay, and let's use our edge refine tool for the hair. And here, what I'm gonna do is make my brush about this size and kind of paint over where the hair goes into our selection here, so just this area like this. And now if I hit K, you can see that that's quite improved. Although we are having a little bit of an issue here with the band in that it wants to make the band the edge of her selection. So we're gonna have to go to our quick selection and just paint in the hair here above the band. Yeah, still not doing a great job. There is this brush tool here, and that allows you to just paint with a normal brush like you would in Photoshop. Um, and if I right mouse click, I can control the size and the hardness. I can also control with uh, control and option, and then right, and then clicking on my mouse, doing left and right, up and down. And here, if I hold down option, I'm gonna paint it out of my selection. And then if I don't hold option, I can paint it into my selection. And let's do K, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna go back to V. And I'm gonna go back onto the edge tool here, make it a bit smaller and just paint this edge as well and maybe this edge as well okay and then I did notice that the bottom of this arm is missing some although I think it's going to be easier to fix some of those things inside Photoshop where I have my pen tool so this is good enough for now. I'm going to hit OK, and then on the group itself, I'm going to add a mask. And then let's go ahead and turn off the background for now. I'm going to go back onto my Move tool, zoom in here, and if we turn our background on and off, you can kind of see the part of the arm that we're missing. So I'm going to go on to the Pen tool with P and just make a pen drawing of the bottom of the arm here. And 
and let's close that up right mouse click make selection and then on the mask itself I want to fill this with white and I'm doing that with option delete and there you go we now have that arm nicely in the selection and it looks like we also need to do some correcting here let's go ahead and select this empty space between her arm and the dress and yes i did just notice that we need to fix our red skirt mask as well here so let's make selection again and here i want to fill this with black and then invert my selection and then i can just go on a white brush paint in there like that okay actually and with my selection still made i'm going to go to my skirt mask here and just paint the edge of this white slightly smaller brush um I'm actually going to nudge this over. So if you go onto any of your selection tools and then just nudge with your arrow key, you can nudge your whole selection by a couple pixels. And then if I go back onto my brush tool, just paint white in here and make sure I got that edge of the skirt. There you go. Let's turn off our background again. I think that looks really nice. The only thing I don't like is the selection of the hair here. Um, if we go into this, you can kind of see the issue there. I think what I'm going to do is just go onto my brush tool. And when you have something that's almost black and you paint it using the overlay blend mode, it's going to turn it black, but it won't affect your white. So if I just paint over this, it's going to get rid of these kind of straggles there. Just clean up that selection. And again, same for the white. If I paint into my whites using the white and overlay, it's not going to paint into the black. It's only going to paint in the white area. Okay, I'm going to hold down Option, click on this again. Oops. And I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and convert this entire folder into a smart object and then if i drag this over here i can take the model layer and pull it in and say yes and then i'm going to do command t for transform and make this smaller and here i want to position it so that this eye here is in the center and her head is just below this guide up here and then this arm here is about there. So about there is where I want it. Maybe a little bit to the left. I'm going to hit the check mark here. Okay. And there's a few things I want to do to integrate this. Obviously, we need to cover up the bottom of her. But also, in terms of her color, she just is not gold enough if she were standing in, behind an entirely gold background. So let's first turn off our guides. and. The shortcut for your guides is command semicolon. So we're just going to do command semicolon to turn off those guides. All right, so back to curves, my favorite color adjustment, command M. And here, because I want to add yellow, I'm going to go to blue and start pulling this down. You can see right away that that's adding a nice kind of yellow cast to her. I'm also going to go to the green and just pull a little more red into our shadows, but not in the highlights, so something like that. That'll just help with the kind of gold effect. And then finally on the RGB, I want to give it just a slight S curve, just so subtle, something like this. The other thing I want to do is I want to add some sharpness to her. So to do that, I'm going to go to filter, sharpen and use unsharp mask and you can see right away that that's giving this a nice crispiness i'm going to leave the amount at 100 
Here we can adjust the radius, see if we want the sweet spot where we're making her sharper, but not adding a whole bunch of contrast. So it's gonna be around two pixels, I think. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave the threshold at two. What the threshold does is if you move it up, it's going to not sharpen anything that's not an edge. Um, I don't really like the effect, so I'm going to leave this just at two pixels, and I think that's good. Okay. Okay. The next thing I want to do here is cover the bottom of her skirt. So let's go to File, Place Embedded, and you can see this image from Raw Pixel. Let's go ahead and place that. I'm going to make this bigger in here. I just want to place it so that the bottom of her skirt is entirely covered with some kind of foil, fo foliage, foliage, fo foliage. So something like this. Okay, and then we're gonna do this same uh, gradient map trick, but I wanna apply it just to this piece, to just to this layer. So let's go and add a gradient map. But then here at the bottom, you're gonna see this little clip icon. I'm gonna click on that. Now you can see that this gradient map is only applying to this foliage down here. So let's go to our gradient. And if we go scroll down to the gradients that we added, our Nucle Gold gradients, I'm gonna use the second gradients here. And you can see that that gives this with one click a really nice gold effect. Okay, so now that we have that in place, I want to add a few more kind of shadow gradients and also a little more shadow behind her. So first, let's select our model, add a layer. I'm going to call this bottom gradient. And I want to clip this so that it's just applying to our model. I'm going to hold down option and right between the two layers, I'm going to click and there you can see it's now clipped. I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard, that'll default my colors to black and white, and then hit G on the keyboard to bring up my gradient. I wanna make sure it's on classic gradient, linear, and foreground to transparent, which it is, and then just starting from about here, I'm gonna make a gradient that goes to about her waist, just like that. And then the very top of our layer stack, I'm gonna add a small gradient at the top and a small gradient at the bottom. And then we're just gonna take the opacity on that down to about 60%. Okay, the one other thing I wanna do before we jump onto the titles is add just a little bit more of kind of a shadow behind her. To do that, I'm gonna go between our gradient map and our bottom foliage layer, add a layer and we'll call this darkness. And I'm gonna set the blending mode on this to soft light. And then just with a black brush, let's go ahead and put this back on normal. I'm gonna right mouse click, make sure I have a soft round pressure opacity brush selected. And I'm gonna change my flow to 20. We'll go ahead and make this brush a bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna start brushing kind of behind where she is. All I'm trying to do with this is get a little bit more separation between our foreground and our subject. And as I do this, you can kind of see what's happening because the gradient map is underneath, it kind of changes the metallic look as I paint over these background areas. So something like that looks really nice. And now let's go to the very top and what we can do is take all of the layers that make up our artwork hold down shift select them all put them in a group with command g and let's call this artwork okay so now we're ready to start doing our text so first let's go to our text tool and for this i'm going to turn my guides back on with command semicolon and then i'm going to go onto my text tool and for this, I'm using the font Mostra Nuova. And if you don't have that font, just click to here, more from Adobe Fonts. 
and that'll bring up after you log in uh, your font search and here what you can do is just go here home and then here type in the name of the font which is Mostra you should it should appear there Mostra Nuova and you'll see here a button that says install font go ahead and click on that that'll give you the font which is used on this poster okay I'm gonna go to white as my color and then click right on the middle of this guide and then type in we'll just use a made-up name Sandra McLannister I'm gonna select all and here I'm gonna bring up my palettes and I want to make this text 192 and I want this tracking to be set to 20 and I want it to be all caps so just that and then let's go to our move tool I'm going to zoom in and then just kind of move this down until it snaps to this bottom guide here okay now before I apply any effects to this text, because it's going to be a multi-layered uh, title with more than one style applied to it, I want to turn it into a smart object so I can still go back and just change the type using text. So let's right mouse click on this and go down to convert to smart object. And here I'm going to call this title background. And for the title background, I just want to give it a gold layer. So let's go to our FX down here and go to gradient overlay. And in our gradients, I'm going to go scroll down to our gold gradients and select this one here. And just make sure it's on 90 degrees going up and then we'll hit OK. All right, next, I'm going to make a copy of this title background. To do that, you can either do Command J or you can drag it to this icon here, or you can just hold down Option and drag your layer up just a few pixels. That'll make a copy. We're going to call this Main Title. And here, I want to do Command T for Transform and make this 101.5. So just a tiny bit bigger than the layer below it. And then I'm going to bump it up maybe three pixels. And then here we're going to be using a layer style. So let's go to Window Styles. And you'll see we have layer styles here. And basically with these layer styles you can click and then it'll apply effect an effect to your entire layer. Which includes bevels, color overlay. So all these effects are built into this style. So I have pre-made some styles for this poster. So we're going to go here, go to import styles. And then in our assets folder, you'll see these nuclei gold styles. Let's go ahead and open that. Okay. So here you can see our styles. The one we're going to use for our main title is this one. So let's go ahead and click on that. And right away, you can see we've got a nice title style there. I'm going to make one more copy of this by holding down option and dragging it and this we're going to call title glow and let's go back to our styles and I want to select this one which is the title glow and that's going to give our title a glow I'm going to add a mask to it and then with my gradient a black gradient I'm just going to go from the bottom of the title actually from about the middle of the title to the top that way this glow is happening just at the top of our letters there as it is in our reference poster all right let's do command semicolon take a look so there you can see we now have the title and we can put these three layers in a group and we can call this whoops main title and because we did this as a smart object if i double click on the main title here and change this name to something else and save it you're going to see that it's kind of applied all those effects to all three versions so we always have our full title put together if we just go in here and change this to whatever we want it to be
Okay, for the bottom type, we're going to use a font called Bank Gothic. So let's go ahead and add our text layer by just clicking with the type tool. And then we can go here and type in Bank Gothic. Now this is a font that um, I'll also include a link in the description where you can find this font. Okay, let's open up our palettes. And for this one, oops, uh, let's go ahead and type in the title, which is The Hunger Games. I'm going to select all with Command A. And let's change this to 148. And I'm going to change this tracking to minus 20. And then let's go ahead and center this up. And then for this, if we go back to our styles, we're going to apply this golden style right there. And if we zoom in here, I'm going to take this, hold down option, like another copy, go back to our type tool. And here I want to type in songbirds and snakes. I'm going to select all. And in my palettes here, oh, actually, we can actually do it down here in our contextual taskbar. I'm going to change this to 108 pixels. And change this to maybe 50, no, 60. We'll make it 70. And I'm also going to get rid of these spaces. Just now, if you want to add a little space between letters in Photoshop, but you don't want a full space, what you can do is hold down Option and use your right arrow key. That'll add some space, and your left arrow key will get rid of it. This is just a way to track manually if you want to add a little space, but not a full one. Okay, so that's Songbirds and Snakes, and then we're going to hold down Option, and right between the two, we'll do the Ballad of... I'm going to select all, and this is going to be quite a bit smaller at 58. And for this, because it's so much smaller, I have made another style with a slightly smaller bevel. Let's click on that. Okay, and then these, I'm going to line these up there. Move this one up. Kind of want to stack these nicely. They should be pretty tight together. Probably something like that. And then I'm going to take the ballad of layer, hold down option, drag this to this bottom line. And we'll just change this to coming soon. And I'm going to select all here, go to my type panel. And here I want to spread this out. And I think I can just leave this white, the coming soon. So we can just take our effects, turn off the eyeball there. Let's go ahead and turn off our guides. And probably want a slightly stronger shadow underneath these letters, uh, just to make this the ballad of text a little more readable. So what I can do here is just go under all of my titling and just add a solid color layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually first select the color I want. So let's go to our eyedropper and just select this dark brownish color back here and then add our solid color. And then here, what I'm going to do is just use kind of an elliptical marquee to make a selection behind these letters. So something like this. And delete this mask and then just add a new mask. So there you can see it's now just masked out that area. And if I double click on my mask to bring up my mask properties, I can add a whole bunch of feathering to this until you don't even see it. But it is making our background there darker exactly where I want it to. So here you can see if I turn it on or off, it is covering that background where I want it. So there you have it. That's how you create that gold effect in Photoshop. And hopefully through the course of this, you also learn some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use in your own workflows and projects. Now, you did see a few layer styles in here. I actually have a full set of titling layer styles where I've gone and done a whole bunch of work to design these layer styles so that they look like film posters, 
from Marvel, Avengers, and so forth. A lot of time and uh, effort put into the fine details. So the, all you have to do is with a single click, get some really nice poster styles. So I'll include a link to that as well in the description of this video. Otherwise, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, leave a like, leave a comment. And if you're interested in learning more about Photoshop, check out Nucli.com. I sell professional training and tools for Photoshop. And if you're so inclined, you can also join my Nucli Academy. It is an exclusive community for Photoshop artists and compositors where we share ideas, tips, tricks, techniques. We also have weekly Zoom calls. I'll put a link to that as well in the description of this video. All right, there you have it. Here are some other tutorials that you can check out, and I'll see you next week.